Yeah, it's been sent in for no power, apparently. Let's have a look, see what's going on with it. Ah, well, this has been dropped. This has been dropped. That button's a little bit fooked. It's stuck, broken. It is also no power, so it's beeping every so often. But it's not actually turning on. This has been dropped, this has. This could be a liquid metal spill, to be honest. Never been opened, good. Unless it's a fake warranty sticker, but... Yeah, definitely been dropped. Because that certainly wasn't me. That case has been knocked off. So if, if this makes a video, if you watch it back in the video, don't forget to subscribe, turn on the notifications, all that good stuff. Hit the like button and uh, follow me on Twitch. I'm live streaming on Twitch and YouTube. All of that good stuff. I know I'm insane, uh, Ellis. Yeah, definitely. I have lost my marbles, but that's just not why I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to myself because I've got fake friends on the internet. Yeah. PS5 had SSD storage salt to the motherboard for speed, but we already know SSD has a finite lifespan. What happens when the SSD on the motherboard dies? Um, dead. Same as any other console, mate. Yeah, the, all of these consoles are going to end up in e-waste eventually through dead SSDs. Unfortunately, we can only replace three of the six chips on these. This video probably still would have been here without today's sponsor. But hey, it's time to show something, right? So here goes. Here at the Coder Productions, we love nothing more than to take as much money from you, the viewer, as we possibly can. Which is why we're proud to talk to you about ConsoleFix.shop. A great place for you to spend your hard-earned cash. I mean, yeah, fair enough. You get parts and supplies that help you fix things, but you've got to give me some money in return. Nothing in life's free, and if you pay me for it, you might appreciate it more. Or not, hey, I'm not judging. With that being said, we do have some pretty cool stuff on the shelves, including power supplies, HDMI ports, charging chips, MOSFETs, and whatever else you can think of that will give you the illusion that you're getting a good deal. So head on over to the online store by clicking on the link in the video description, and if there's one thing I can guarantee, is that there will be a way for me to take your money. Console fix, your friendly money grabbing YouTuber. Uh, not giving any voltage. Um, no, not necessarily. So, if you're not giving any voltage on the power button, that doesn't necessarily mean that the safe bridge is bad. It could mean that the 3.3 volt or the 5 volt rail is shorted. When you've got your power, when you've got your 12 volt power rail. Your 12 volt is going to feed your 5 volt. So your 12 volt is going to supply power to the 5 volt through MOSFETs or chips, um, voltage regulators, that sort of stuff. So you'd have like 12 volts coming in, 5 volts coming out, unless it's a book boost regulator. And then obviously it can boost the voltage then. But uh, for the most part, you're going to have like a 12 volt feeding a 5 volt. Then you're probably going to have a 5 volt feeding a 3.3 volt, and you're going to have a 3.3 volt feeding, for example, your 2.5 and your 1.8 and stuff like that. So, if, for example, you get a short on your 5 volt rail, you're probably not going to get any 3.3 volt because there's no 5 volt to feed that 3.3. So, yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean that one specific component is bad. It could mean that any of the higher voltage rails are bad as well. You can check if there's a problem with the set with UART, yes. Uh, so if you connect up UART and you get a response from UART, you say it's pretty good. So yeah, I can show you what the um, what's going to come up on UART if you say bridge is working. So assuming the safe bridge is working on this, which I'm assuming it is because, well, it is beeping. You know, even though the button is absolutely knackered, it is beeping. So I can potentially show you what. He's going to come up with UART. I'm just going to connect up to my UART reader, just like that. There we go. Doesn't have to be a perfect soldering connection as long as it's connected. Here's my UART connected to the PC. There we go. If I go over to my PC and I'm going to load up PS5 Wii tools. Okay, so if I go to terminal and I select COM port 19, so option 5 for me, and I'll turn on EMC mode, and I'm going to plug UART in now, oh, well I'm going to plug the PS5 in now, and if the safe bridge is working we should see something come up on the screen. 
in about three seconds. Nope. Nope. So the safe bridge isn't receiving. Ah, there we go. So it's taking a little while longer for the safe bridge to receive power because there's a short on this board. So I've just tried to turn that on. It's just not going to happen. We might get another response in a few seconds from the UART um, reader because of that. No, maybe not. Um, if we unplug it and plug it back in, we would get another response. Let's actually see if we can get some error codes up on this. So, error log zero. We've got 8091002 as the error log. Let me just load up my database here and see what we can see. I should really be resetting this, but let's just see what this error code actually means if we've got it in there. Let's see if I've got this one in my database yet. No. That sucks. 8087. 003. Error after safe loader. Hmm. I'm not actually sure what that means, to be honest. But I have got that error code in there. 8091002 again. 8087003. I've got a feeling these are all going to keep repeating. Okay, so the problem with this is that those error codes, they're basically stored forever. It can't store any more error codes. It can only store 10. It can only store 0 to 9. So what we have to do is basically type in ERRLOG, error log clear. We need to wipe those codes. And then, if you look, it all shows up with Fs. So that means that there's nothing wrong. There's no error codes. So now, if I apply power again now, we can see if we get any error codes. So I'm going to apply power again. We should see another UART command ready. There we go. Press the power button once. I don't know if that will store an error code because we didn't see a blue light. We did. Uh, okay. 8091002 has just returned. And 003. I'm assuming, yeah, it's just going to keep bringing those error codes up. So whatever the issue is with this, right now, if we figure it out, we know that it's going to be related to these error codes. So, but yeah, that's basically what we should see if the safe bridge is working. We should see that error code and it should, um, uh, sorry, that uh, UART command read a um, message. So it should say that those two dollar signs, uh, man U, UART command ready 36. That's why it should come up if UART is working. And UART's only going to work if it's connect if the safe bridge is working. So what we can do now, unfortunately, there's not really enough information on those error codes to be able to fix this. So what I need to do, what we're doing, uh, a few of us, is when we're coming across these error codes, when we're coming across all of these different error codes with the devices that we're working on, we're logging it. We log in everything. We log in what the error code is. We log in um, the missing voltage rails or, for example, the faulty chip and what we have to do to fix it. That's what, we, that's what we're working on. That database you see right there, that database is, in a few weeks, going to be a publicly searchable database for free. So I'm going to be basically launching a website, uartcode.com, I've already registered it, so you can't go and register the domain, uartcode.com, and it's basically just going to be a completely free, publicly searchable database of all of the error codes. Use that in conjunction with Andy's PS5 Wii tools, and you've got yourself a full diagnostic tool for free. Because Andy doesn't charge for his tool, I don't charge for access to the database. So, yeah, that's the plan. The first step with any no power is to go through your voltage rails and try and figure out what rails are missing. For me, even though schematics are not available, I've worked on so many of these that I know where most of the power rails are on this side of the board, which means I can test them quickly because I'm just used to seeing them. I'm used to going through those rails and I'm used to where to test. You know, I've sat there and I've I've sat there and I've checked on working boards and verified all of these rails and stuff. So we should get a five volt here, which we do. We should get a three point three here, which we do. We should get a 5 volt there, we do. We should get a 3.3 .3 there, we do. We should get a 
uh, 5 volt there. Yep, we should get a 2 volt here. Yep, we should get a 2.5 volt here, but not until we press the power button. So, let's, uh, well, I'm going to need to ground this so as I can press the power button at the same time. So we should get a 2.5 volt here when I press the power button. Uh, on these caps, all these inductors the same as well. And we get that, okay. We should get a 0 0.8 volt there, we do. We get a 0.8. We should get a 1.37 volt there. Well, between 1.35 and 1.37 normally. I've got to wait for this to reset though. But this rail will only enable when the console's on as well. Come on. Come on, you can allow me to press it. You know you want to. Okay, we've got no 1.37, so it's not generating the RAM for the voltage rails for the RAM. 12 volt there. Uh, 12 volt there. Yeah. Uh, I think it's 5 volt here. No, it's 12 volt there. Where's the 5 volt? Um, I've got to remember now where the 5 volt is. There's actually still a couple that I don't know off the top of my head. Um... Wait, is it that one? Yeah, it doesn't matter. I can't remember the 5 volt. Um, never mind. There's a 5 volt meant to be here when I turn the console on. That's not coming on either. So we've got a one, We've got the, the RAM rail is missing. And the 5 volt rail is missing from down here. Could be a signature failure. Maybe. Okay, we've got a typical dry spot on this. Cool. Right, so... The one thing about this is I know that the F7002 fuse is working because we're getting 5 volts there and 3.3 volts as well. Or if this was an EDMO20 board, anything other than the EDMO10 on F7002, you're going to get 5 and 1.8. But on this one, it's 5 and 3.3 .3 on this particular model. The rest of them, it changes to 1.8. But I know that f 702 fuse is good because I'm getting 5 volts on the... Uh, left hand side of the fuse that's why i always check the left hand side of the fuse and not the right hand side so i don't need to worry about that so the next step for me is going to be number one to try and drain any residual current by shorting this 12 volt connector out for a little while all right so just shorting those to ground that will basically uh, drain any excess current and what i'm going to do first is just inspect this apu because i do suspect that this has been dropped so we're going to check this APU more specifically in this right hand corner because if these get dropped a lot of the time they end up with an impact on the right hand corner and it cracks the actual APU. If that's the case we just say no. We walk away right now. So I'm going to just clean off some of this liquid metal so I can have a close look at the APU. If there is a chip in the APU, then we just walk away. We just say, no, nope, it's game over. So the liquid metal would have to be cleaned up anyway and reset. So what I may as well do is just do that now. And then I can inspect the APU under the microscope at the same time. I will check every corner, obviously, because it doesn't necessarily mean it's got to be the uh, top right corner. You know, I want to make sure... Before I waste any more time, I want to make it make sure that it's not an issue with drop damage cracking the actual APU. But the other thing I want to check as well is the actual liquid metal underneath the foam. There's too much liquid metal on the actual foam for it to have not been. Even if it was kept vertically, there wouldn't be that many that much liquid metal soaked into the edges of it. Whether that's the actual cause of the issue is, you know, that's a completely different question. But it's definitely been dropped at some point. No, nope, there's no liquid metal spilt. So it's not that. That's not the cause of it. That is incredibly clean underneath there. Not going to be the cause of the issue. So, yeah, I'm going to put that back. I haven't damaged the gasket or anything. Or the, uh, well, the adhesive. So I'm going to just put that back and call it good. All right. We'll carry on then. So I'll start the actual diagnostic process then. So the first thing I'll check then, because we've got a uh, beep every few seconds, well, every like 20 seconds or so, I'm going to check this, cap, this bank of caps here and see if there's any short there. I'll connect one probe to ground and go into continuity mode. Nope, no short. 
So it's not that. Uh, I'm actually going to use my probes rather than using the uh, crocodile clip for ground because then I can test fuses at the same time. I should make 100% sure. Yep, no, we're good. I'm going to hunt around, have a look for any shorts, any blown components or anything like that. Test some fuses. Uh, well, I'll pretty much mainly just be going around the common areas to start with and just seeing if there's any shorts on anything. Yeah. Okay, we've got a short there on F7502. So, remember what I said about one of the 5 volt rails being missing? And it's pulling down some other rails. So, this 5 volt rail here is pulling down the other 5 volt rail over the other side. That there is short. That fuse is good. But this rail is short. This shouldn't be short to ground and it is. So, what I can do now then, rather than sitting there trying to figure out what's actually wrong, uh, what component's blown, considering how many there are on the board, I can just inject voltage because I've got a shorted rail. If I didn't have a shorted rail, then I wouldn't be able to inject voltage because it wouldn't tell me anything, basically. Whereas because there's actually a short there, it should. It should tell me something. The keyword there being should. So I'll go for one volt. And the reason I'm going to go for one volt is because I don't know if the 5 volt rail is shorted to another rail. For example, the 1.8 volt or the 1.1 volt. So I don't want to inject higher than my lowest rail. I know we've got a 0.8 volt rail, but that's being generated, so I know that's not short. So the next rail that could potentially be short is a 1.1. So I'll inject 1 volt, and then that way I'm not injecting too much voltage into the 1.8 volt rail, uh, into the 1.1 volt rail, sorry. So I'll inject voltage on the shorted component. We get 3.8 amps of current draw. It's bouncing all over the place. But I'm just going to feel around and see if I can find any hot spots. I could use a thermal cam for this, but I don't have it to hand. Because I'm a lazy technician, I keep leaving it in the house. I'm not feeling any heat anywhere at the moment. I might have to go and get my thermal camera, to be honest. Uh, one of the problems is I'm losing a lot of power to that connector. So that that probe is too thin, really, for what I want to do. So I'm losing a lot of power to it because of the resistance changes. So now I'm, I'm drawing 5 amps, which is a lot better than 3. 5 amps should generate some heat. Okay, this is a strange one. It's not generating any heat. Unless it's one of these two caps. The problem is I can't actually see that. So, it could be one of those two caps there. But the problem is the probes are going to be getting hot. Oh, wow, it really is getting hot. Look at that. He was actually starting to try and burn the board because of the heat. Wow. That was getting hot right there. Um, so it could be one of those two caps. So what I'm going to do is just remove those two caps and just see if it's still short. The heat's not really helping me. In fact, let's do this with the multimeter connected, and then that way then I can see if it goes away as I'm removing these caps. Well, I'll say with the multimeter connected, I mean, I've got the, uh... right, what's going on? Damn it, I didn't connect the right probe. That's better. Yeah, so I can remove one cap, test it, and if it doesn't clear it, remove another. But I'm not actually going to remove the caps. What I'm going to do is... Push it off to the side like that, and the short's still there.
And there the short's gone. He was that calf there. Damn it. Well, both of them caps have just blew off now. But, <laughs> yeah, that short's gone. That is, or should be, fixed. We might end up with a blown fuse because of the range of current that was going through it. But other than that, it should be all good. I'll just grab a couple of caps off a donor board. I should really test that area, shouldn't I? Yeah, there's no short on that area, so... Yeah, um, I'm going to drop my airflow down to 20%. No, 30% will do, stuff it. So that left-hand cap was short. I mean, it doesn't really matter replacing both caps. They cost pennies. Jeff, thank you. Thank you for becoming a channel member, mate. I appreciate you. Thank you for the support. All right, so there's a couple of caps off a donor board. Just increase my airflow now and surface tension will pull them into place. Maybe not. Maybe not. Oh well. There we go. Now I know the soldered nicely. Just give this a quick clean up. Good stuff. Cool. And there we go. No more short. Excellent. So I've just got to test all the fuses now. Make sure they're all good. Because we had 5 amps of current running through this circuit. Which means that it could have blown one of the fuses. Like that one. And that's why you check your fuses once you've injected voltage. So that fuse has blown. Uh, that fuse was likely good before because the protection on the board would have been, you know, turning that rail off. But that's why you check your rails. Uh, that's why you check your fuses after you uh, do voltage injection on the EPS fives. Because if you don't, then you're likely going to put it all back together and end up with a blue light of death. So. We'll replace that fuse as well, not an issue. The fuse is good on the donor board. There we go. So F7001 has been replaced, as well as those two caps. To be fair, the amount of current that went through that other cap, it probably weakened it anyway, so it's probably best to change both of them at the same time. Job done. Give the ports a visual inspection as well, just to make sure that they're all good. And we're going to put it back together. This console needs a good service, but for testing, it'll be fine. So I'll just make sure it turns on. If it turns on, then I'll service it. And if it don't turn on, then I won't, obviously. Boom. That, my friends, is a win. That, my friends, is a win. Let's just make sure we get a video output. We are not getting data lines out. Hmm. Is that port broken? Ah, there we go. Right, yeah, cool, okay, I'll leave it turned off for a bit, and uh, now I can service the console, make sure it's clean before it goes back to the customer.
So that power button, when you press it, it's getting stuck. And that's going to cause a problem. Um, there's a potential to cause that to get stuck in safe mode. Realistically, that customer needs to get that power button replaced because that can cause a lot of problems. Um, it could randomly press the button while they're playing a the game. Um, it could press and hold the power button when you actually turn it on. It could turn on unexpectedly. So there's loads of different things that that can cause, loads of different issues that can cause. And the only real way to solve that realistically is to replace the front panel because other than that, it's uh, it's never going to be right again. Not really. Yes, I could ultrasonic it, but I think it's probably still going to get stuck. And it's probably going to cost the same to get it ultrasonic than it is to actually um, replace it because... The ultrasonic cleaner costs money to run, it costs money in fluid, and it takes my time as well. So I'll put it to the customer to offer them a replacement, uh, you know, front panel thing. Let's just have a look and see if we get a display. We do. Good stuff. So what I'll do is I'll contact the customer in the morning. It might get better over time, maybe, but I doubt it. Yeah, I'll contact the customer in the morning. I'm not going to put this back together tonight because it's just not worth putting back together tonight, just given the fact that there's a potential that the customer might want a replacement front panel. But I just can't give that front panel out for free, obviously, because that costs money. I'll leave it as that for now and call it good. The console's working. That's all that matters. The issue was down to one bad cap, and then obviously because I've injected voltage, that's caused one of the fuses to blow as well, which is completely normal. You know, you can blow a fuse, or you can sit there for hours trying to figure out what's actually shorting. Obviously, voltage injection didn't help me on this occasion, probably because I didn't have my thermal cam. If I had my thermal cam, it would have pointed straight to that capacitor being bad, because I could have used the macro lens on it and actually isolated it the faulty component from the probes so i probably could have you know caused uh figured out uh the issue and figured out figured it out with voltage injection but i just couldn't be bothered to get the thermal cam from out the house um i used it the other day to trace some um central heating wires uh, central heating pipes in the house so it's left in the house but never mind it's all good but yeah there we go Another hopefully happy customer. I will, of course, try and hustle him out to some more money by upselling him a front panel, but I do think he needs it. So.